Before this video starts, I'd just like to make an announcement. I have the Liberal Tears mug uh, for $14.99 on my website. It is the first link in the description if you want to go pick one up. Um, don't worry if it breaks when it comes to your house. I'll send you another one for free out of my pocket. I don't care. I want you to get your Liberal Tear mug. Uh, it comes in uh, Liberal Tears white with the face, black with the face, white without the face, and black without the face. So pick whichever one you want, and it'll come to your door uh, in about three to five days. So that should be epic. First thing in the description, thank you. Let's go on with the video. Privilege always assumes racism without evidence. Always assumes racism about, without evidence. When there is no racism, they simply make up the evidence with regard to white privilege. So here at Mizzou, they just make up the evidence of white privilege. They can't find evidence of white privilege. So what they do is they just make it up. My question is, uh, I'm doing a speech in my public speaking class about white privilege and why it's a myth. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I brought up this topic in class, everybody just lost their mind. Yeah. yeah. And they said, you can't talk about it because you're white. And it's, you know, how do you respond to that? In I mean, the first thing I would say is check your privilege. <laughs> right? I mean, why don't I get to say it because I'm white? Are you a racist? Is the argument less valid because I'm white? Why well, argue with the argument as opposed to arguing with the color of my skin? It seems a little bit racially discriminatory that you're not allowed to speak based on the color of your skin. Either the argument is good or the argument is bad. How about this? How about if I get a black friend to come in and I hand them the text of my speech and she reads it? <laughs> then is it a better argument? Okay, thank you. <laughs> white privilege is a way to silence anybody who is not of color. That's what white privilege is. It is just a leftist bullshit term that means shut up because you are not a member of a minority group, a privileged minority group in the leftist space. It's reverse racism of the highest order you're basically saying to white people who aren't racist and you can't find any proof of their racism that they must be racist because they're white. That is called racism. If you are accusing somebody of something simply because of the color of their skin without any evidence, that's called racism, gang. Hi, Ben. Howdy. So unconscious bias is a concept well documented in psychological studies, which is basically that people associate negative things with people of color and positive things with whites. So if that is true, how does it, given that that is true, how does white privilege not exist? Okay, so um, you're asking about unconscious bias. I apologize because it's kind of echoey, but, but the, uh, the question was, if there is unconscious bias, just to repeat it so I'm making sure I get it right, if given there is unconscious bias, how does white privilege not exist? The question is, given that there is unconscious bias, how does white privilege not so, exist? Uh, so, okay, so number one, so when I speak about white privilege, yes, so Thank when I speak about white question. privilege, I'm speaking specifically about behavior. Okay, there have been no studies, and really I've looked at these studies, the, the, the connection between what they call implicit bias, this is their, their favorite phrase now, implicit bias, unconscious bias, and biased behavior has yet to be proven at any level that is even remotely necessary to be used in, for example, a courtroom, which is why it's never been used in a courtroom. It is also true that there is no way, there, there really isn't, there's been no proven way to alleviate what they call unconscious bias, which means that we're ghost hunting. So what I would suggest is that if there is unconscious bias, and I'll acknowledge the possibility or the reality of unconscious bias, if there is, then I need you to put, I don't care about what's in people's heads so much as what they do. So if you point me to an, a racist behavior, I'm, uh, don't worry, I'll, I'll, let, you, I'll let you respond. Uh, if, 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 I, if you point me to a racist behavior, I'm happy to stand alongside you and protest it. What I can't do is protest about things in people's head that I don't know about because I'm not a mind reader. Okay, so that's a really interesting response. And to that, I have two questions. Firstly, what I've heard you say that this is something that, you know, the way people think doesn't affect their behavior. So that, that's the first thing you've said. So I'm really curious if you can, can give me another example of a thought that somebody has which doesn't affect their behavior. Like, do people who, you know, support Trump not vote for him? Like, I'm very curious about that. Yes. And secondly, okay, okay, that was, okay. So mm -hmm. the second thing that I want to ask is that if it's something that's it's hard to fix, does it mean we shouldn't do anything about it? Because you said, oh, I don't know if we can change how people think. Does that mean we shouldn't try? I mean, first of all, not a great impression. But beyond that, uh, <laughs> but, my voice isn't that low. Um, but, but, beyond, but beyond that, um, as far as the, the first question, which is do people have thoughts that, they, that, that don't manifest in behavior, yes, all the time. For instance? For instance, every thought that you have about walking up here and strangling me right now. I mean, I assume, I I mean, I assume like, we, we have thoughts right. all the time that don't manifest in behavior, and this is true every single day. We consider thoughts that, that cross our minds. And the problem with unconscious bias is the idea is you don't even know that you're having the thought, right? So how can you stop it if you don't even know that you're having it? But then we should be able to gauge the unconscious bias and its impact on behavior. That's why it's unconscious bias as opposed to conscious bias. The, the, the idea behind unconscious bias is that it's not even a ghost. It's a ghost of a ghost. 
because you don't even know you're having the thought. So people, like, the, the, whole, the whole idea behind diversity training is just is, is the idea that you can retrain people to stop their chain of thought in order so that it doesn't manifest in behavior. I don't think that every thought manifests in behavior. If it did, then every time a man saw a good-looking woman walk down the street, a straight man saw a good-looking woman down the street, we'd have a real mess on our hands. <laughs> so you know, the, the, the second question, the idea was, was a little too broad for me to respond to, which is, just because something is tough, don't we have to face up to it? Yes, we have to face up to tough things all the time. And one of the tough things I would suggest that we face up to is that you have a lot more control over your own behavior and the decisions you make than the supposedly widespread unconscious bias of people you've never met. Let's talk about the perks that white privilege supposedly confers upon you. So she says, the author here, she says that perks that are conferred upon you by white privilege include things like when you go to the grocery store and you get a Band-Aid, the Band-Aid is your skin tone. Seriously, is what she says. Right? For, for those who live in the real world, this is also called the free market because most of the people in the country happen to have a lighter shade of skin. And if you want to sell more Band-Aids, then you are going to market to the group of people who buy more Band-Aids. But no, this is white skin privilege. Another example she uses is she says that if you go to a hotel, that the, the hotel shampoo works better with your hair if you're white than if you're black. I don't know how she scientifically tested this, but in any case, this is, again, if, if this is as far as white skin privilege goes, I can tell you nobody should use hotel shampoo because it's gross. Um, in your video where you debunk white privilege, you talk about how white privilege is a made up term by privileged minorities. So I was wondering if you can elaborate on some of the privileges that you think minority groups have. Okay, so for in, privilege is in law. So when I, when I say privilege, I'm actually gonna talk about legal standing. Okay, so affirmative action is a privilege. Affirmative action is a privilege. Subprime mortgages designed to appeal to minority loan, to minority recipients without proper qualifications, that that is a privilege. And those are a couple examples of, of privilege. Privilege would also be the, the police being told that they can't police in communities the same way they would in other communities because they don't understand the problems of minority communities. That's a privilege. It's, and by the way, these privileges are not helpful, but these are but as an overall matter, but they are, it is certainly a pro, it's very difficult for me to see how it's not a privilege to get a lower score on the SAT than the Asian guy who's living in exactly the same circumstance. He gets penalized 50 points, you get 230 points on the SATs. That is definitionally a privilege. So there's one. Do you disagree? Yeah, but I don't want to take okay. up this time, so I'm just going to let. A style of dress. We talk about white privilege with regards to style of dress. Okay, seriously, this is nonsense. If there, there is no white privilege with regards to style of dress, because here's the reality. If you sag your pants, if you sag your pants and somebody says to you, pull up your pants and you're a white guy, nobody says a word. If you sag your pants and you're black and somebody says to you, pull up your pants, you will be called a racist. The poverty rate among two parent black families in the United States is 7%. The poverty rate among white single parent families is 22%. What happened to the white privilege? Why isn't the white single mother richer than the black two parent family? Well, because single mothers are not richer than two-parent families. End of story. Would you like to know why there's a disproportionate poverty rate in the black community? Because there is a disproportionate single motherhood rate and dropout rate in the black community. Okay, as much as we can talk about white privilege, the fact is that the single motherhood rate in the black community in 1960 was 20%. Today, it is upward of 70%. Unless you are going to argue that racism in the United States has more than tripled in the same period of time that the civil rights movement had its great successes, this is nonsense. So I want to start with the white privilege issue, because this is a big one that comes up on campus a lot lately, probably the biggest one. This idea that you are a victim inherently if you're not a white person, that the Constitution was built for white people, the Declaration of Independence was built for white people, Western civilization was built for white people, and therefore it inherently privileges white people above black people. This is stupid. It is stupid. It's tempting, but it's stupid. Okay, first of all, it is true, of course, American history is replete with racism. And some people are currently affected by racism in the past. You may not have inherited as much wealth if your parents lived under Jim Crow. Obviously, that's true. But we cannot fix that with more racism. Injustice does not solve injustice. Taking somebody else's property does not fix the problem that your grandfather's property was taken from you. We can't fix where we start in life. But we can fix where we're going. It turns out that if you don't want to be poor, permanently poor in the United States, all you have to do is three things. There's three things, according to the Brookings Institute. You can do all of these. They're very easy. Right? Get married before you have babies, finish high school, get a job. That's it. Poor white people are people who are having kids out of wedlock and not finishing high school and not getting a job. Right? It's true for everyone. The fact that it's disproportionate in the black community doesn't mean that whites are racist. 
It means that something needs to change inside the black community and people need to start taking personal responsibility. I know these words are out of style. Personal responsibility for the stuff that you do. It is your life. Make something of it. And let me just say this nonsense about white supremacy. It is the vilest form of bullshit racism to suggest that all white people who disagree with you are racist. If you believe in white privilege and you can't find the evidence, then you just make up the evidence. It's really convenient. This is also true, by the way, with regard to the, the grand crusade that surrounded St. Trayvon of the Blessed Hoodie. Right? The fact is that Trayvon Martin was sitting on top of George Zimmerman by witness testimony and physical evidence, sitting on top of him, banging his head into the ground, breaking his nose, and then George Zimmerman shot him. Okay, it's all there. It was all there when, when, they, when they did the trial. But it turned into another instance of racist white Hispanic people, because right, George Zimmerman was actually Hispanic, but he is the first white Hispanic in history, just like Barack Obama is our first white black president because he was half black and half white. George Zimmerman turned into a white Hispanic, the only one that has ever been. He's, like a, 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 he's an endangered species wandering the plains. <laughs> We cannot fix where you started in life. We can't. That's beyond your control. That's beyond my control. But the notion of white privilege suggests you can never, under any circumstances, overcome where you started in life. Because there's this big bear called white privilege that's trying to eat you. That if you make it, all, even if you make all the right decisions, white privilege will stand in your way. That is a lie. There's not a white person anywhere that is forcing a... I have so much hatred for Donald Trump. So much hatred for Donald Trump. You don't want to kill him, dude. Fuck Donald Trump. I don't want to kill him, but I mean, I'll catch his face. I mean, gotta knock a nigga out real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Deport Trump! Deport Trump! Deport Trump! Deport Trump! Deport Trump! Big ass to the road! Keep going! This go way. this way! Xenophobia! Xenophobia this way! Go! Go! We are all immigrants! We're all immigrants! Remember?
Fuck all these niggas. Fuck niggas. Fuck everybody. 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 There we go. Yes, Are your parents legal? I'm asking a question. Obviously, they're not. Maybe you were born here. Don't listen to his bullshit. Maybe he said you the were same born here. To me. His but bullshit. were your parents legal? You are racist. Yes, it you does. are a racist. Because it shouldn't be in this country. Racism at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my God. They can go back to whatever country they were born. Everyone in this country was not from here. We're all immigrants. Exactly. We are all. A lot of people have been there. That's what God gave us. That's what makes us all you. That's what gave us rights. Now fuck you. Mexico is very hard on their borders. Why don't you go? Why don't you go down south? This is going to prevail. But you lost the land. Thank God you lost the land. You think we want America to be like Mexico? No. If you want it, go to Mexico. Don't let the door hit you in the land. You're prouder than us. He is prouder than us. You go to Mexico. He's accused me of dying of AIDS. He's called me a girl. He is homophobic. He is racist. Why would we halt Islam? Islamic people do nothing wrong. A bunch of people who are terrorizing has nothing to do with religion. Any company, any store, any church goes against the word of God. Hello, everyone. Hey. I'm just stopping by to remind you that liberals are insane. <laughs> Social justice warriors are becoming more violent and triggered than ever before. Anyways, be sure to subscribe to KGP TV on YouTube and have a blessed day. Yeah, man.